Amen. The Lord said, where two or three be gathered in his name, he is here. He cannot lie. I want to play. Uh, Before you do, can you see me? Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> That's like an asshole. Because you brought those over here. You got you playing that in a car. God wants us to sing, Welcome Holy Spirit. It's really a prayer. It's, it's part of a prayer, of the prayer. It's not just a song. Let me get the feel of this. Welcome Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. Fill us with your power. Live inside of me. Welcome, Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. Fill us with your power. Live inside of me. You're the living water, never dry fountain, comforter and counselor, take complete control, welcome Holy Spirit, we are in your presence, fill us Holy Spirit. Yes, you know when, when you ascended on high before you did that you talked to your disciples mm -hmm. your followers and you told them I go but I'm going to leave another Comfort. a comforter a teacher and he's going to be here with you and if I don't go he can't come that's what Yeshua said if I don't go he can come. And he will give you power, hallelujah, to overcome the world and everything in it. And so we need the power of the Holy Ghost. We need a touch from you today, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. We need you. We love you. We welcome you. And we just want you to just be here as the master teacher. You flow as we sit at your feet and listen to what the Father would have to say through his Son, Yeshua, Jesus Christ, the Nazarene. Amen. Amen. I want to play Exodus 19 because it's showing true trembling as the Lord Father's coming down and resting on the Mount Sinai. Watch this. Be. 
Exodus 19. In the third month after the children of Israel had gone out of the land of Egypt, on the same day, they came to the wilderness of Sinai. For they had departed from Rephidim, had come to the wilderness of Sinai, and camped in the wilderness. So Israel camped there before the mountain. And Moses went up to God, and the Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel. You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure to me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. So Moses came and called for the elders of the people, and laid before them all these words which the Lord commanded him. Then all the people answered together and said, All that the Lord has spoken we will do. So Moses brought back the words of the people to the Lord. And the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I come to you in the thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak with you, and believe you forever. So Moses told the words of the people to the Lord. Then the Lord said to Moses, Go to the people and consecrate them today and tomorrow, and let them wash their clothes. And let them be ready for the third day. For on the third day the Lord will come down upon Mount Sinai in the sight of all the people. You shall set bounds for the people all around, saying, Take heed to yourselves that you do not go up to the mountain or touch its base. Whoever touches the mountain shall surely be put to death. Not a hand shall touch him but he shall surely be stoned or shot with an arrow, whether man or beast, he shall not live. When the trumpet sounds long, they shall come near the mountain. So Moses went down from the mountain to the people and sanctified the people, and they washed their clothes. And he said to the people, Be ready for the third day, do not come near your wives. Then it came to pass on the third day, in the morning, that there were thunderings and lightnings, and a thick cloud on the mountain and the sound of the trumpet was very loud, so that all the people who were in the camp trembled. And Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet with God, and they stood at the foot of the mountain. Now Mount Sinai was completely in smoke, because the Lord descended upon it in fire. Its smoke ascended like the smoke of a furnace, and the whole mountain quaked greatly. And when the blast of the trumpet sounded long and became louder and louder, Moses spoke, and God answered him by voice. Then the Lord came down upon Mount Sinai, on the top of the mountain. And the Lord called Moses to the top of the mountain, and Moses went up. And the Lord said to Moses, Go down and warn the people, lest they break through to gaze at the Lord, and many of them perish. Also let the priests who come near the Lord consecrate themselves, lest the Lord break out against them. But Moses said to the Lord, The people cannot come up to Mount Sinai, for you warned us, saying, Set bounds around the mountain and consecrate it. Then the Lord said to him, Away! Get down and then come up, you and Aaron with you. But do not let the priests and the people break through to come up to the Lord, lest he break out against them. So Moses went down to the people and spoke to them. Exodus 20 And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me but showing mercy to thousands, to those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day, to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work, you, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gates. 
For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male servant, nor his female servant, nor his ox, nor his donkey, nor anything that is your neighbor's. Now all the people witnessed the thunderings, the lightning flashes, the sound of the trumpet, and the mountain smoking, and when the people saw it, they trembled and stood afar off. Then they said to Moses, You speak with us, and we will hear, but let not God speak with us, lest we die. And Moses said to the people, Do not fear, for God has come to test you, and that his fear may be before you, so that you may not sin. So the people stood afar off, but Moses drew near the thick darkness where God was. Then the Lord said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the children of Israel, You have seen that I have talked with you from heaven. You shall not make anything to be with me gods of silver or gods of gold you shall not make for yourselves. An altar of earth you shall make for me, and you shall sacrifice on it your burnt offerings and your peace offerings, your sheep and your oxen. In every place where I record my name I will come to you, and I will bless you. And if you make me an altar of stone, you shall not build it of hewn stone, for if you use your tool on it, you have profaned it. Nor shall you go up by steps to my altar, that your nakedness may not be exposed on it. Wow. Could you hear that clear, son? Yeah. I mean, that was a, um, if you could, like, uh, close your eyes, like, if, you, if your eyes was closed and you was imagining that happening as if you were there, that was a fearsome sight. And they told Moses, the children of Israel told Moses to have him not to speak lest they die because his voice is as the, the, the sun of many waters and I believe that's like a, the abyss you know like the deeper you go in water you you will implode you know you will it's just thick a thick voice he and he he, he just started telling them all those commandments everybody heard him talking you know and that and because because I think at one time somebody a lot of them they didn't believe God was speaking to Moses to tell them certain things so he said I'm gonna show them you know so they was like we believe you now you know tell him not to talk anymore lest we die and they was backing away. And he did say, he did that, that his fear would be in them, before them. So, he's a big God. I mean, most people, just because they haven't saw him or experienced certain things, they just, a lot of us, we, we don't take it serious you know and he's a holy God he said make sure y'all don't go sleeping with your wives and make sure those priests you know consecrate themselves lest they die it's just he's a holy God we just can't go to him any kind of way he deserves reverence and respect and he he knows all things he knew that if he didn't tell Moses more than one time to tell those people, don't don't come up here trying to see me, he know how people are. You know, people are like that. They'll try to, I'm finna go up there and see. And then they get a lightning bolt, burn them up or something, you know, just trying to break through to see him. And he, you know, Moses told him, we put bounds, you know, boundaries around the mountain. They already know basically not to 
come near the mountain, but he said, go and tell him again, basically. Because somebody here was having that thought. <laughs> yeah, because he just know, the, he know people. Everything. Yeah, he, and that's how people are, for real. Instead of us running, we trying to go and see, you know. <laughs> but, it's true. And I, I, I would say this. They um, were warned. You know, God had to say it to him again. No, you go tell him again. It was some folks, and it was probably more than one. It was many that was like, we don't go see God out for ourselves. Because if you read the book of Exodus, you will see they were constantly telling Moses at different times, who made you Lord over us? You know, who are you to tell us what to do? And some will say, I'm a prophet too. I'm a this too. I'm a that too. <laughs> so they, they, they were spitting out their resume to Moses as if God didn't call him. Yeah. You know, and this is why I Bad do. Bad things happen to him. I do reverence um, ministers in the gospel and keep my mouth off of them. Even if I don't like things they say or do. It's not for me to judge. It's for God to judge. And when God is called, I remember one time I was talking about a particular minister. And um, I had some choice words about this particular minister. And this was uh, probably maybe five years after the Lord had saved me. And I, I just knew I was telling the truth. And, you know, he this, this, and that. And the Holy Spirit rebuked me. Ooh, we. Father rebuked me. It just happened to be the voice of the Holy Spirit. But he was like, don't you ever, as long as you live, put your mouth on the body of Christ. I don't care what you don't like about them. That's not your job to judge. It's mine. I'm the righteous judge. You don't know why certain things ain't happening at that ministry. But you be quiet. And what you don't understand, you pray for. That's what the Holy Spirit told me. Mm. He said, what you don't understand, you pray about. But don't you ever, as long as you live, put your mouth on God's servants. He said, shut up. And I was like, Ooh, okay. Mm. And from that day to now, Lord, forgive me. I don't think I have. But if I have, I repent. We can't talk about God's people. I don't care who they are. I don't care if they're the toilet cleaner. Yeah. I don't care if they are an apostle, a prophet, evangelist a pastor or a teacher or just what they call ministry helps in the church even your brother it, it, just, just Chris I can't talk about Chris he's my brother in the gospel if I see something off the, the best thing I could ever do for him is pray for him pray about it if, if the Lord showed that to us he showed it so we will intercede for them yeah. but uh, I was thinking about David, he never violated Saul, although Saul tried to throw a spear through him and spear him to the wall and all kind of stuff he was doing, Saul, trying to kill him and kill him and kill him. 25 years sought to kill and him. And he respected him. Even when they got killed, one man, they killed that man because it was like he said that he killed, he told him to kill him and he said Basically, you did not fear to kill God's anointed, and they killed him. I mean, it was like, how dare you come back and tell us you did this? <laughs> I mean, yeah. it, it's just, and he, he cried for both of them. He cried for Saul and, and the son, Jonathan, mm -hmm. and it was, he respected him because he still, in his eyes, was God's anointed. God chose him. God anointed him and appointed him. He and although he wasn't a very good king, at one time, David had a good relationship with Saul. But Saul changed after David became popular among the, the people because he was a, a vigilant and, and, and a, a man of valor. And he went off to fight wars and he won every war he fought. So when he would come back, the women would cheer. They would have a parade and cheer. And David killed tens of thousands and then would say, Saul killed a thousand. 
So he, that's when his heart, that one particular parade, that's when his heart filled with rage and vengeance to David because he was so angry that the people was looking at David more than him and giving him more, giving David more praise than Saul, the king. And Samuel told him that the kingdom will be taken from him and given to another. So he knew that he was fired and somebody else got put in his place. So, uh, but David just still respected him. He could have killed him. He wouldn't dare, you know. It's just, in saying this, it just shows we got to have a that heart because God said, David's a man after my own heart, you know. And we see in heaven, Lucifer, he was thinking bad thoughts in his heart about being like the Most High and got cast out. I mean... The Lord just want us all to know, I know your thoughts so far off. I know what you're thinking. And here David, he had good thoughts all the while. But uh, Saul was possessed too. It was a, a demon, an evil spirit troubled him. If he could just be delivered from that, you know, if people can be set free from whatever has them, yeah, they're doing these crazy things, but... I don't think we should, I'm finna just discuss them with the, the this person in the church, that's, you know, cause somebody's gonna spread it, you know, but if it's a couple, somebody should say, Let, let's pray for them, let's pray for him. And they may not get better till death, they might go out a bad way, but it's just, maybe the Lord allows things to happen to see what the people will do, you know? Sometimes I think about that because he did say he will allow a false prophet to be among his people to prove us to see whether we love him. You see? Well, when if you go back to the beginning of the book of Samuel, the people, the Israelites, were complaining because all the other kingdoms around them had a king. So they didn't want a prophet that God had anointed and appointed who at the time was Samuel to be over them they wanted a king like all the other province around them all the other cities around them had kings so they were like we need a king and so Saul was very vexed by it I mean not Saul Samuel and he prayed and Samuel was the prophet and he prayed to God and he said Lord these people are rejecting me. He said, no, they're not rejecting you. They're rejecting me. He says, I'm going to give them a king. I'm going to give them a king after their own heart. So we see why God gave them the king. And, and he chose Saul. He knew Saul was going, Father knew Saul would reject him. He had already rejected him in his heart. And Father knew it. Mm. But yet he called him and he appointed him to be king over them. And so, are we recording? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, what I can say about uh, uh, King Saul is, although he was anointed and appointed to be king, God already knew his heart. And he set him up to use him to show the people this was in your heart. This was y'all about. You're not about my kingdom. You're not about nothing but what you want. And so God has a plan for the kingdom of, of God, the people of God, to do his will. And he allow wicked kings and, and, and queens and presidents and whatever you want to call it in modern day to be in office he allows it he said that he sets up and he takes down that's father don't think that nobody that's in office right now is not there because God didn't appoint them and anoint them to be there he's still God mm -hmm. he's still reigning and ruling over all the earth and all the wicked men that's sitting in these high positions they, they calling the shots. They ain't calling nothing. Father already knew what would happen. 
But he's testing us through their disobedience, through their wickedness, through their rebellion. He's testing every man, every woman on the face of the earth. And he's saying, are you going to do what my words say? Or are you going to be putting your mouth on that king, on that queen, or whoever, you know, senator, congressman, governor, president, whoever? Are you going to be putting your mouth on these people? Or are you going to pray to me, who is God over all the earth? I can turn the hearts of men. Don't matter if they got titles. Don't no title supersede Jesus' title. And definitely not fathers. Not one. Satan is not stronger than God. I've already said that in many of our teachings. The Lord has said through me that if Satan could have taken heaven, he would have taken it by now. If he could have overthrown Father God, he would have did it by now. When he fell... I don't know how many years ago that was. I don't have exact dates, but I know it's in the thousands of thousands. He would overtake in heaven by now. He would overtake in God. He cannot do it. And he never will. I don't care the lies he tell. Because see, if I, I'm just being honest. This is just a metaphor. This is not real talk. But if I was in... Satan's kingdom I'd be like why we just don't go take heaven right now why we can't overthrow God right now why we wait until what the Bible say till the fullness of time <laughs> why we got to do that why we can't just do it now and that's the reason for anyone who's listening not to follow Satan because he will never overtake God read the Bible you see in the end he falls Go ahead, Chris. Everybody's got to choose. He mentioned them that love me and them that hate me. You know, we don't want to be haters of God hating him. We just, it's a heart condition. Whether, wherever we go, we because of us it's our it's our fault is because of our hearts and we we know we're not right we can cry out and just tell the lord i'm not right he he likes the honesty just say i'm i'm not right lord i, I got issues you know just he likes that versus just thinking we're okay when we're not like I'm, I'm quick to tell the Lord, Lord, I ain't feeling it today, you know, and I'm, I'm kind of this or that, you know. I, I just want Him, cause He already knows. So I just go ahead and say it, or I was like, Lord, I'm, 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 I need strength, and I, I feel weak, you know. You're the source. I, I just need, I need you to quicken me, you know. But this is a, this is not us trying to get through this life and now we're like, whew, I can take this mask off now. No, it's for eternity. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the way we are, we're, we're making ourselves, I'm not ourselves, but the Lord is making vessels of honor for eternity, not to pass in this life and say, oh, I made heaven. Now what? You know, it's like, this is who we are. And I, I know he knew us. He he knew us before we came because he, he said, I hated Esau and I loved Jacob. And they weren't even born <coughs> as babies, natural babies on the earth yet. And yet he said, I, I hated Esau, you know, loved him less, loved Jacob more. You know, not like I hate his guts, you know, that word hate. Because <laughs> he said, hate, I got to hate Don. Hate your wives, hate your mom, hate your own life. You, you know, in love, he's just, he's got to come before everybody. Because people can die off and leave you. And he will be there. He will remain and everybody else is gone. And they can start out right, 
and then just start dropping off. But some people probably be faking it for people. You know, I don't want to fake. I don't want to be a fake for to gain position with somebody, you know. Some people try to gain position. Some people go sit in the front row. Notice me. Put me here. I, You know, I'd rather just be cutting the grass outside. And I could be praying, looking at the open sky. And they in there trying to be all up under the pastor or somebody, you know. Sign, are you okay? Uh, how did it go out on the... Oh, I was, was going to add really quick. People are caught up in titles yeah. in the church. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's whack. So there, it's still happening, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I'm not talking about last night, but I'm talking about just adding to what you just said. I mean, what you, you saw about? it? You saw that personally? Yeah. Yeah, I'm I mean, just... It happens a lot with younger people, but right. I'm not sure if it happens too much with the older people. It happens with at any age group. If people haven't hmm. been delivered from that thing and they've allowed it to be in their heart, it doesn't matter the age. I've seen it in older, middle, and younger. It don't matter. It's, it's a heart condition, and until we fix our heart on God's word, don't vie for position, don't care whether you have a title or not, you know, don't care that you sit in the last seat in the ministry, I don't care who you are. There's no one high and mighty. Only God is high and lifted up. So if you have the title of apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, no matter who you be in the kingdom of God, everyone is equal to you. You are a servant. You are there to serve the people. That's a, a minister's job, is to serve. That is, it, it's, not a, it's not a job for you to be seen. Because a lot of people like to do stuff to be seen. They like to feel big, you know, and want people to look up to them. But the only person in the kingdom of God that we should be looking up to is Yeshua, Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, and Father. And of course, we, we love the Holy Spirit, but we are not even to glorify the Holy Spirit. The Word of God says that the, the Holy Spirit glorifies the Word. He magnifies Jesus. And Jesus magnifies our Father. Mm -hmm. So, it's a humbleness in the kingdom of God. And if anyone wants to serve, you have to have a humble spirit. If you don't have that humbleness, you really should not be up. If you feel God has placed you over people to, to lord over them and to, I'm the pastor of this church. You have the wrong attitude. God is the pastor of the church. Let me play this verse. Go ahead. And said, Assuredly, I say to you, unless you are converted and become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Let it play again. And said, Assuredly, I say to you, unless you are converted and become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. The words of the Master. We got to be converted and become as little children or we will not enter. And, and, and if we're, if we're going to compete for anything, see who can be the humblest. The humblest. And that little kid, you know, they, they do want to sit in dad's lap. You know, I had that happen where if, if it's more than one kid, they... But one kid will be like, I ain't going to even try. Whatever. Y'all go ahead. You know? <laughs> but. Wow. 
they do follow though they they just so trust that parent they hope they're not being led astray if we can think back but uh back back to you son so uh did you want to share something like Uh, yeah. Right. About last night. From your experience, yeah. So, um, <coughs> the, uh, the man that is like, I'm not going to say the leader of the group, but he, he's, he's humble about just being able to give us some education based on his experience mm -hmm. in the field. And he's, he's been doing a really good job with that. Um, he's been really stressing taking the the church to the streets, you know, the place that, you know, most churches may even reject those people and just loving on people. That's really the mission that he is, um, that we are trying to uh, accomplish. Mm -hmm. And uh, just last night we went over like a brand name and um, they even made a logo. Um, they had made it without really talking to anybody. That it was only one person in the group and him. And they discussed it and they showed us. And I'm like, well, dang, you didn't want to <laughs> come up with a group name together, or you didn't want to come up with the logo together. But I guess they they figured it out. But um, I'll show you. Well, I'll just read what the mission statement for the group is. Mm -hmm. So the, the, they call the brand Surrender Dayton. Mm. And the mission statement is bringing the south side of heaven to the streets of the earth. Mm. The goal is for surrounded, surround, surrender, I'm sorry. The goal of surrendered is to finally get out of the four walls of the church building. You know, taking the comfortable people to areas that have been historically taboo. Matthew 16, 24 to 26 is Jesus telling the disciples that they have to take up their cross and lose their life to follow him. That is a call that stands for us today as much as it did then. We will surrender our life for others to know that they are surrounded by the presence of God. So that was the mission statement that I came up with then. We liked it, but as far as like the actual, what we did last night, um, it was great. Did you get to we, pray um, for anybody? I did, I got to pray for one person, but it was, it was a lot going on, it was a lot of people. And we had originally bought 75 hot dogs and a bunch of uh, bags of buns. Hmm. Uh, we had a cooler full, filled with um, water and me on my on my own, I just I made a bunch of bags of uh, buttering cookies because you know those are cheap, and they, there's like 50 in a pack, so I put like five in little baggies. I just made a bunch of baggies. Those disappeared real fast. <laughs> Sweet. Because I didn't expect as many people, but remember Michael was saying, you know, the the traffic is the reason why we're going to be out from seven to nine. And traffic was, and we ended up running out of the 75 really, really quick. So someone went and bought uh, probably over 75 more. And so when I got there, I set up my um, my little table, I had my clipboard out. And when I talk to a person and I get to know them, I like to draw a picture for them as I'm like, you know, talking to them. And then once I got understood their story and stuff, because I want to know context. You know, I don't want to just, you know, make it super, super quick. Unless, you know, I have multiple people coming up to me wanting prayer. Mm -hmm. But there was one particular uh, young man who um, was really, really down on his, uh, down on his luck. Mm. He was in a, he was living in, he, uh, yeah, he was living in a group home. And uh, he suffered abuse from his parents and abuse, abuse in the group home too. And, um, Recently, he had some kids beat him up over something really stupid. 
And he was saying like he really needs, like he, he's wanting a government assisted phone or like a free phone. And um, gosh, I really wanted to help him, but it's like he, he was needing a ride to this place and this place. And he said he would like a phone. And I understood that he wasn't exactly asking for us to pay lots of money for a phone, but he he needs a phone because he got beat up and he couldn't even call the police. And by the time he did call the police, the police told him, like, you need to call earlier because, you know, it's after the fact. They're gone. You know, we can't really do anything. Mm. So I felt, I felt bad for the guy. Uh, but I did pray for him and I made a drawing for him and that made him happy. Um, I got to talk with him some more and Danielle showed up. And, um, I came up with a suggestion to um, direct people to our church that are really unfortunate because we have something called uh, the Dream Center at our church. And the Dream Center is literally a building that showers people, gets them clothes and food, and even offers um, therapy. And, and the whole nine yards. So I don't know why, but last week, last last week when we were out there, I didn't even think to suggest that to people, but it just came to my mind to direct people who really needed to, to the Dream Center. Mm. Um, so when I got there, I drew a little bit. Um, I prayed for only one person, and then I, I ran up to the hot dog stand, and I'm like, hey, just let me take over. I'll, I'll get the hot dogs. And, you know, let's swap out. And I was doing the hot dogs for a while, because there was a lot of hot dogs. Uh-huh. And um, I ended up uh, talking to another guy. He was, um, I guess he was a street minister. Uh-huh. But his, um, I don't want to say anything bad about someone who may be, like, an appointed minister. But, like, he was just... He was wild in the streets, yelling and uh, basically talking to himself because he would be like doing some weird movements and like just preaching. But like, I'm like, dude, no one's around. And you, I don't know. I don't know if the guy is on something, but when I did get a chance to talk to him, uh, he was he was saying a lot of true statements from the Bible, and I was agreeing with him. I'm like. Yeah, you got it. Like, you're right, you're right, you're right. But it's just, the delivery is like, I don't know, it's just, I feel like it was one of those things that could scare people away because of how he's going about um, pushing it out there, you know? Mm. And he was he was saying a lot about um, um, investing in our cause and... Uh, how he makes music and a whole lot of stuff. He was an older, an older guy. Actually, I drew him, so I'll post a picture of what he looked like. I took a picture of him with the um, drawing. But he was saying that he was a prophet. A, pro- a prophet or an apostle, I forgot which one he said. Uh, interesting guy. <laughs> he referred to himself as King Charles. I mean, I, my heart goes out for humanity. Only the Lord is going to say yay or nay to people and how they represent it, you know. I, I, I do know that the Bible says he will pour out his spirit on all flesh. And, you know, he said all flesh. And people will be prophesying dreams, visions and all. But we do. I do know there's a way we have to do things decent in order. Be presentable. Don't be smelling. Don't be smelling like alcohol. Prophesying. Because I remember there was this one lady in Pontiac. She was praying in 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 the tongue in a tongue, and I smelled liquor, and I'm like, wow. I'm like, wow. You know, and she was homeless. But when she when she spoke in that tongue, it was a group of kids going by, and they just they went around this corner, and I heard some screaming and stuff, and I'm like, what the world? So I ran to see where they're okay, and one of them 
their mouth was bleeding and they was laughing and I was like what happened and they said she said I don't know but when that lady spoke uh, we all just fell we just fell and I hit my mouth and mm. yeah but it's like some stuff I question I'm like Lord I, I don't understand <laughs> you know but the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit but that's why I, I do know some people that they're going to say, Lord, Lord, we did this and that, you know, in your name. And he's not going to let them in. See, that's the only thing I look at. I'm like, man, I, I pray everybody's okay. Everybody's good with him. And he will say, come, you know, come in. You did good. Because the gifts and callings are without repentance. When he give a gift, he don't take it away. Like, see how you draw? Said he ascended on high and gave gifts unto men. It's also talents, too. You think he's going to be an Indian giver? Give me back that drawing talent. And, and, you know, or spokesmen. People who can be a... a I don't know. It's a heart. It's, it's all in the heart and just having a relationship with his Holy Spirit because he said a communion of my spirit be with all of you we can't truly say we commune with him and wouldn't the Holy Spirit check us not to be a certain way don't be dirty don't be looking at pornography don't you know be lusting after young girls young men I mean and, and calling yourself this and, and, and hitting your spouse or verbally abusing anything you you name it. it that's not how the Lord Jesus is is this his spirit or not is this what he would be like and be no I mean I would say reverence when we reverence the Lord if we're not right if we see something's not right I I know he'll respect us if we say I'm gonna sit down Lord I ain't right I'm just not right that's how I am, you know. I'm not gonna be up doing something. I know I got, I got, I gotta get some stuff squared away. I gotta go. I gotta fast. I gotta fast and pray this thing out of my life. I got a thorn here, and it's troubling me. A thorn is not good. I don't altogether know what all thorns are, but I know a thorn is not good. It's gonna keep. Every time you move this way or that way, ah, you know, it's just, yeah, it's like, get get this thorn out. I, I just know me. Uh, go ahead. I was going to say one thing I didn't like is that he was referring to himself as King Charles. When there should be a recognition of just one king. Yeah, I know well, um, there are king. He's the king of kings, and the Bible do says the kings of the earth, um, and hmm. the princes of the earth. Uh, I can find it. I, 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 I forgot about that. Yeah, I, Lord. Lost. Who, who was referring to himself as King Charles? This fellow. Oh, this. Oh, okay. The fellow you sent the picture. Yeah, that's that's the guy who referred to himself as. I would say be humble, you know, let somebody else say long live the king. I don't want to brag. I'm I'm not going to call myself King Chris. Right, that's 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 what I would say. You're like you're not you're you're a king or you I won't be your sub, you know, people will think that. Who 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 you who you over? How are you a king? Where's your subjects? Where's your soldiers to protect you? Where's your kingdom? A king with no kingdom. Where's your treasure? Mm -hmm. But I'm glad you're you're observing.